All right. Okay, I think I think I got everything set up for once. <laughs> oh, what happened to my video? It should be on. Oh no, nope. it's not on. Great job. Look at there, I cut my hair. Ah! <laughs> What's up, guys? We got Taiwan in the house, Nigeria, Canada, Florida. We got all the folks in the house. I'm hoping the stream stays up because um, there's like a big storm coming through, so we'll see what happens. We'll see if I end up losing power and getting cut off because it's very, very likely. I'm hoping not. Kansas in the house. How's everyone doing today? How's everyone doing on this lovely Friday? Love to hear, thank you. Yeah, it, it was getting too long. I like my hair long, but it was too long. So I had to cut it down and let it grow back out a little bit. So I don't, I don't like it when it's short. So I tried to save as much as I could. We got Richmond in the house. That's right up the road from me. Sri Lanka, welcome, welcome, hello. <laughs> Storm photography. <laughs> so as you all know, y'all already know what it is. We're gonna do some editing your photos on the stream. You all submit it. There are no more submissions during the live stream. Um, and I'm sure I'll get asked that question 50 times, but it is what it is. My my mustache is always like... <laughs> um, but yeah, I think this is one of the first times that I have like no JPEGs. I think there was one. Like y'all actually listened. <laughs> And nobody submitted JPEG, so um, yeah, we're gonna be jumping in there. Oh look, we got Denmark in the house. Haven't been on a live for a minute. Happy to catch this. Welcome. I couldn't submit in time. Oh no. Do you have more groom BTS? I I have another BTS that I'm working on right now. Um, I want to get it out next month, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. Jesse coming through again with the super chat. Thank you so much. Thank you for thank you for always hanging out and always like really throwing a super chat in there. I really appreciate it. Another coffee and pastry, some tasteables as I like to call them. <laughs> um, let's jump in here though. Let's look at these submissions we got. We got some good stuff going on in here. Y'all always come through with like the best photos. Happy Friday, John. Do you have any predictions for the Fuji Summit? I do not. I have no idea. I've been I've been following the rumors. I'm not going to talk about all that, but so we'll see what happens. I'm hoping I'm hoping it ends up being like pretty cool. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. What I really want though, my my dream is an XT5 with no more flippy screen. I just want them to make the X-T3 body with better insides. <laughs> I just want a functional camera. That's all I want. Oh yeah, so this time around, I'm pretty sure the majority of the submissions was Sony actually. Like last time we had a whole bunch of Nikon, this time Sony coming through hard. Beautiful photo. We're at ISO 200, so we got some wiggle room. Do you usually shoot in manual mode on Fuji? I do. For me, manual, it just gives me the most control um, that I would like to have in my photos. Oh my goodness, magenta. Sony seems to be like magenta, like it just has magenta issues. But yeah, so a lot of times people, they feel like manual is very hard. And especially for something like wedding photography, the, the reason it is, is not because it's hard, it's because there's so much to think about on a wedding day. You know, there's like, there's a lot of moving pieces 
there's a lot happening and you're like also trying to be like wait a minute what uh what's my iso and what's this and what's that so really what it comes down to is having a process for how you like to find your settings for manual and that's what i've gotten down to which made it easy when i first started shooting when i first started shooting i was shooting in um aperture priority because it was just easier for me to keep up with everything look at that difference y'all look look at the difference that some magenta makes <laughs> Ah, is, is this the same person? And it's a different photo. I love that foreground, but I might have to I might have to trim my mustache real quick. This thing is bothering my nose. Yeah, foreground blur is that uh it's that sweet spot. How do you edit photos to have the same mood? Um Do you mean mood is in like like tone? like bright and airy versus dark and moody is that is that what we are referring to as in mood feels a little crooked to me same tone so for me personally again and it's not just me plugging my preset but i, I mean i have to plug it but I took five years to really hone down my style and within that time i created a preset for myself and it works across the board for me. And that's basically how I get all the tones about the same, is that I use a single preset on all my photos. Cause that's one thing people are like, oh, how do you use a single preset like for everything? But it works and it's fine and it's been great for me. Example that is shot in natural light versus photo using strobes. I mean, yeah, it's all, it's, I don't think the way the light is doesn't really change the tones as much. I mean, it will, but after that point, you have to do white balance and stuff. But generally, I like to just use one preset and go from there. Oh yeah, here's the before and after this one. Do you think a wedding can be shot using aperture priority only? Oh yeah, definitely. Again, that's how I started. I was shooting aperture priority for like two years or something before I started switching to manual. And the only reason I ended up switching to manual is I kept running into the camera, just making weird choices sometimes and it would affect my photos. So this, this is definitely gonna be a subject select cause they're backlit. We're gonna wanna pull those shadows up on them mainly. And then we'll raise the whole scene. Honestly, I'm feeling like this one should be black and white, but we'll see. We got Sweden in the house. Welcome to the stream. You're amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> do you use auto white balance in the settings? Yes. I usually do auto white balance most of the day. What is your go-to export settings for Lightroom? Oh yeah, let me, um, hold on. Let me first change just the black and white. There's something weird going on with the shadows and I don't know why. It's like there's dark spots on their eyes. It's just the light. Where's the furthest you travel for weddings? So I've only really done weddings on the East Coast. I haven't been out of the country and I haven't done any weddings on the West Coast. So I guess Technically, the furthest would be Florida. That's about equal distance, though. I've been, ooh. I've been um, upstate New York as well, so it's about the same, but pretty much just East Coast. So 
So let's do export settings. I, I'll do it on this one here. So my export settings, there's a couple of different ways you can do stuff, but the main point here is if I'm, if I'm exporting for print, let's say. So first let me actually pick where I wanna put this. So the year, the session type, where did I put my, oh, it's under YouTube. And then I'm gonna put it in a folder called May. So I'm gonna put in a subfolder. And then I usually do JPEG, sRGB, 100% quality. No resize to fit. PPI is 300. Sharpen for screen standard. And then I add sharpening and grain outside of Lightroom. So I have it open up in a different program. So this is exposure. And I have a sharpening and grain preset I use in there. And that's my, my export settings. I use that for print and also for digital. Thanks for all the info you share. You're welcome. Yeah, so this would be the final product. And then I add my sharpening and grain preset onto that. And then, then it's fully finished. So I sharpen at the JPEG stage, not inside of Lightroom. The preset adds a little bit of contrast, some grain and sharpening, and then that would be the whole process. Florida in the house. <laughs> I'd love to shout at you the next time you're there. I haven't, I haven't shot down there in a while now. We got Mon Monterey, is that? Mexico in the house. All these photos are backlit. This also, oops, I didn't want to select the sky. I don't, I don't, I don't want that. First off, this photo is like tilted and y'all already know I hate Dutch tilt, but it's so close that you can't really, can't really do anything about it. How many presets do you recommend to have in order to keep a style? Honestly, not that many. I would say find find a preset that you like, that you feel is closest to what you would like to have, and then tweak it to really fit what you want, and then stay there, and that's it. Like, don't, don't have 50 different presets. I really wanna try Imagine AI. Do you use it for all your sessions? I do. I don't, I don't edit anymore. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I can, I can even show y'all if y'all want to see it. Um, yeah, let's, oh, wait, I, I don't know if I can show it right now. I'm using a beta. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, uh oh, there it goes. Let me see if I can, um. Just figure this out so I don't show y'all some confidential information. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Okay, this is the non-beta version. This is what's out currently. Um, let's see. So, it's gonna make me close Lightroom, but let me show you. So edit. Hold on, let me, um, what I have to do, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into these photos, right? And let's, let's take these right here. So I'm gonna five star these for now. Okay. Then I'm gonna go back into Imagine AI. I've already taught it, it knows my style and stuff. So I'm gonna edit now. So I'm gonna say cool, edit some photos. So I want to get a catalog. This is the catalog I'm using here. It's going to tell me I need to close Lightroom. So I'm going to close that out. I just want y'all to see this because like a lot of times people, they're like, oh, 
editing with AI, what is, like, you can't do that, da 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 da, and they're so scared of it, and it was like, ah, um, it's legit. So I open up the catalog, I'm gonna name it May Livestream. I'm gonna use the natural fields color. Um, I'm gonna also have it straighten. And then we can filter out our images. So I only want, I only want five star photos. And so now you see here, this is May. It says five, cause I five starred about five. Boom, choose it. And so here it is, it says, okay, you're gonna do these five photos from that thing and use this preset. I'm gonna say, great, send. I don't know if I can move that over yet. So it's gonna upload the stuff, which should take it like five seconds, especially for five photos. So there it goes. So that's done. And now the AI is gonna edit it real quick, which that should be done in a few seconds as well. While we're waiting, let me read through some of this. How come you had sharpening your grain out of Lightroom? So the main reason that I ended up coming up is because Fuji files in Lightroom aren't really the best of friends. And you can sharpen in Lightroom, but a lot of times it gets a little weird. So I started doing it outside of Lightroom. And what ended up happening is I actually like the way it looks better. So that's just what I do all the time now. Would you export images twice for regular digital or, and or prints? I, it, it's not wrong to do that. Um, especially if you wanna export with sharpening for paper, then that would make sense. Let me just, I have my notifications off. Usually there's an email that you get when it's all done. I would assume it's already done and I just missed, yeah, it's done already. Okay, so. Now I'm gonna go to download. It's gonna ask me which catalog, again, the project. So here's the project, May live stream. And it goes into the May live stream. It only edited five, but it's saying there's 85 images in there. So I'm gonna start the download. Uh, don't show me that again, start the download. There, and then we can open it back up. And now we should see these five photos, there they go. Look at that, y'all. Come on. Come on, y'all. Oh, AI can't do it. AI, y'all, I ain't edit that, that was not me. And that's exactly how it looked. Look at all that beautiful magenta in there. Look at it. Aaron, you can't edit with AI. I don't know, I don't trust it. Now the one photo that was hard, which is why I selected it, was this backlit one. I wonder what it did with that one. This is not so bad. And see, so that's what I'm saying. So like, a lot of times everyone is like, okay, I couldn't see myself using AI to edit. I couldn't do it. But for me, being able to get my photos back like this and then come back in here and be like, you know what, I would change this just a little bit. That is so much more of a time saver than having to sit around and edit yourself and or it's cheaper than having to send it to real people. So like, if I'm gonna send it to real people and they're still gonna mess it up and I still have to go through and make additional edits, why not just give it to AI? Because at that point, what I usually do as I'll come through and if something doesn't look like right, like if I wanted to raise shadows, I'll just do it here in the quick, quick develop and just like bump the shadows up here. And I don't even have to go in. I can just be like, oh, that's a little off. Boop, boop, boop. And that's it. How much is AI? I think it's like five cents a photo or something. So it's basically about the same as if you were going to outsource your photos. It's just cheaper. You know, a lot of outsourcing places are charging 35, 40 cents a photo, which makes sense. You know, there's real people doing it, real people need to get paid. Um, but when it's just a machine, they can do stuff like charge five cents a photo and turn it around. So like, yeah, I just edited, I did, I did an engagement session with like 300 photos or something and it was like 30 bucks. You know, like 
and it, it got it back to me immediately. It was amazing. You know, like, I just don't know why everyone's so scared of the AI. I understand, like, letting go of the control and stuff, but I'm telling you, like, it's good. It's, it's really good. Do you think it's good to use vignette? I, I don't really have an opinion on vignetting. I don't really add it in much. Hey John, shot my first wedding last Saturday. Thank you for all the information you provided. They went great. Awesome. That's cool. Good job. What type of light sources you usually use? Natural. I mainly use natural light. I don't like using artificial lights. If I don't have to use artificial lights, then I, I don't. Do you use AI for calling too? I do. Um, I use uh, Aftershoot. So my workflow right now for my personal, like my actual paid work is I go into Aftershoot, Aftershoot calls it for me. I double check just to make sure it looks good. And then after that calls for me, then I send the photos to Imagine AI and then the AI edits it and then I make sure it looks good and that's it. And again, for me, when you're at the level I'm at with business and I'm not saying, oh, I have so much business. But again, I'm doing a lot of different things. I have a family with four kids. I have, you know, YouTube content that I have to make with sponsors. And then I have my couples that I'm also making videos for, or not videos, but I'm doing photo and photo editing for. So to being able to truncate that time of my couples a little bit, so I can also focus on other things is extremely helpful. After shoot is amazing. We got flame in the house. Welcome to the stream. Um, this is gonna be silhouette, so I'm not gonna raise the shadows on this one. I might just leave it like that. Maybe warm it up a little bit. And see that that's why I like the natural feels pretty light. It it's pretty much about the same. The colors don't really change too much. Do you still wait a while to deliver images or do you surprise the clients? It's half and half. Sometimes I do wait a little bit because on the same end too, like you want to take your time with the photos too. Like I don't just rush through them. I still do look through things. I still do edit the stuff that needs to be retouched up. But on the same end, like sometimes, sometimes turning something around too fast can be like sus. You know what I mean? <laughs> You like you get the photos back the next day and you're like, did you even edit these? I don't want my couples to feel like that. So sometimes I do hold on to them for a little bit, but it's not like I'm just holding on to them like, okay, I'll deliver them now. You know what I mean? Like, hey John, does AI does edits and applies your preset as well? Yes. So there's, there's two ways that you can use Imagine AI. You can upload 5,000 of your own edited photos. And when you do that, it learns your style. Or you can um, you can choose one of their talents, which I recently became a talent as well. So the Natural Fields preset is actually in Imagine AI. So you could just use that if you wanted to. Um, but if you have a style that you use constantly and you like already, you can teach it to it so it edits like you do. Nowadays, clients want a fast turnaround. I don't necessarily think so. I think it's the type of client, and I also think it's the type of business you run. Um, generally, and you know, not to sound like I'm hating on anyone, but generally people who are on the cheaper end, or more so people who don't respect the art and are more concerned about price, those are the type of clients who are going to want you to just turn it around as quick as possible. They're the type of clients who won't think that it's sus that they got the photos back the next day because to them, quality is not really the main point. It's more so just getting what they paid for. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a different type of client. We're like high end clients higher end clients understand art they understand quality they understand like artisan so if you turn around in a day for them they're gonna be like is there something wrong with it um it's the same difference like sometimes when you get to a level where your photography is so good and you're charging too little 
it actually turns people away because they're gonna look at it and be like, what's wrong? It's the same just so like, my wife and I right now are like just looking for a house, which if anyone knows anything about the housing market right now, it's absolutely insane. But you know, like when you're looking at houses to buy and you look at one and it's like stupid cheap, you're not like, oh yeah, that's a great deal. I'm gonna buy this house. Your first thought is what's wrong with it. So it's the same thing with like wedding photography or photography in general, most products. You know, you go to Walmart and you see a purse and it might look good, but you already know you're in Walmart and the thing's five bucks. So in your head, you're like, that thing's probably gonna fall apart in like five seconds. Oh, nice. This is a cool shot. This is black and white, definitely. It has like a very classy, classic wedding feel to it. I'm shooting weddings. Do you think my Fuji 3314 can be a good pair of the 18 and the 90? Yep, that sounds like a great setup. You got your wide with the 18, you got your close ups with the 33, and you got your tights with the 90. Are you going to do BTS wedding again? Yeah, I do. I have two recorded. I just got to finish editing them. I used your natural feels and imagine. I love it. Yeah. Please never remove it. <laughs> yes, I saw your preset on Imagine AI. So I don't need a lot of photos to upload. Yeah. If you're using my preset, you don't have to upload anything. You can just use the preset. This is very important for me. I hope you will upload this session to the channel. Yep. Generally, these go up on the channel. So lots of, if y'all, yeah, if y'all want some insider information, go back and watch my live streams. Like, watch them all the way through, because I'm very candid in the live streams. So true, never thought. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, lower prices can actually hurt you. Because that's the thing. There's a lot of people who are, they're like scared to actually do certain things. And like, they're scared to raise their prices. And because of that, they have lower prices, but then they're mad because they always get like, they get all these couples who just like want to nickel and dime them. And they're like, oh, I always get people who want to act whatever. So yeah, it's a, a lot of times, a lot of photographers hurt themselves by being scared of prices and thinking that they have to charge low. There's a lot, it's even the same thing. Like they feel like they have to turn around the photos fast. They feel like they have to give a lot of photos. They feel like they have to have cheaper prices. Those are just the cheap people. And again, I'm not trying to like pigeonhole anyone or say anything bad about anyone there's a type of person for everything so the couples who just want some photos and they want a cheap price you just have to understand what what their main motivations are it's like um when i was doing um audio post-production the post-production house i was working at one of the the assistant engineers because i was like uh like an intern basically he always told me this thing where like on any project or anything you can have there's like three different things it can be cheap it can be fast or it can be good but you can only have two you never can have all three and that's how any project is it can either be cheap fast or good so if you want it good and fast it won't be cheap if you want it cheap and fast it won't be good if you want it fast and good um it won't yeah, it won't be cheap. Wait, what's the other combination? <laughs> it's, if you want it good and cheap, it won't be fast. Yeah, so it's, it's that kind of thing.
Do you offer mentoring? I do. Um, I have a I have a link somewhere. I always forget where my link is. I need to add it to my bot so it just like routing forms. Wow. So the mentor sessions, I've done a couple so far. It's basically like an hour and a half of sitting down with me. I'll go over your portfolio if you want to. I'll go over your website. We can talk stuff. We can just chat about anything. Um, all that stuff everything anything how many photos do you usually give to for a wedding gallery so i i quote my couples an average of 650 it generally ends up being more than that um but the average is 650 i i tend to always give around like eight to a thousand though depending on the day itself A little off topic, do you accept your final payment the day you deliver the final edit images to the buyer and groom? I do not. Uh, final payment happens before the wedding. So I usually do the final payment two weeks before the wedding. And then they get their photos. Um, some people, again, and this goes back to what I was saying about photographers feeling like they have to do certain things to like appease the couple, which is not needed. Some people would be like, oh, I couldn't see myself like making them pay before they get, but they're, I'm showing up on the day of, they're getting something. The The biggest thing is you don't wanna ever be put in a situation, are these edited already? They feel edited already. But yeah, you don't wanna put yourself in a situation where the couple has the power and mainly this means like not everybody but as a business owner you can guarantee a level of service that you're going to give people you can guarantee that and if for some reason you don't like the bet the better business bureau and all kinds of people can come at you right whereas the couple they don't have anything upholding them to any type of standard photography is subjective so if you wait for the payment until the photos and then they're like, we don't like the photos, which they can say because it's subjective. They can just say that if they feel like it. Now, there's nothing you can do, really, because you can't say, well, no, you don't like them. Like, you can't say you don't like them. It's my best work. It's subjective. They, they can say whatever they want. Whereas if they had paid and they don't like it, you being a business owner, again, knowing how you're going to run your business and having a certain, like, caliber of how you're going to run your business you can work something out with them and get to a better place and you know serve them versus it being like now y'all are fighting over the money because you gave them everything you said they were going to do but now they're demanding that they don't want to give you everything that they said they were going to and it's so yeah use the payments before the wedding do you use the brenizer method a lot on a wedding day not a lot but i definitely get at least one or two in um i'll generally do a i'll generally do a brenizer during the ceremony because everything's usually pretty still and it's really nice to have like this big brenizer ceremony photo like right at the beginning of the ceremony nice this is a great shot gotta level that thing out though Let's see, let's see how the preset, yeah, cause it's a, it's a lot of orange. Yeah, and I need it to feel brown, not orange. 
Did y'all see that? So this this is a great this is a great example. A lot of people ask about skin tones. Did y'all see where that came from? And how I had to adjust the preset? Because that's a lot, that's a big part. I get people all the time who buy the preset and they're like, it didn't do what I thought it was going to. You still have to edit the photo. The preset is just like a tone basis. It's if anything, I think I can add a little bit more magenta in there. And those greens, I almost want that shirt to like, I wonder if I add saturation. Yeah. I need that green to come off the screen a little bit more. Um, someone asked me about the OP1, but I don't see it on here no more. Did I miss it? Oh yeah, there it goes. <laughs> Unrelated, but what do you think of the new OP1? I've seen the, the OG in the background a few videos. Yeah, um, so yeah, I do have, I do have the old, original op1 i actually got this recently this thing is maybe a year old at this point um the new one looks cool and especially that it's stereo and stuff um it's a great upgrade but that price yo they're like hey new op1 we haven't done an op1 in 10 years this thing is two thousand dollars dang yo <laughs> <laughs> I saw your Brent Isaac tutorial on YouTube is still gonna get it right. It does take a bit of practice. The skin tone change was amazing. Yeah, it's just it's it's just a lot of tweaking and understanding because the biggest thing here is I didn't want her skin to look orange. That was the biggest part. And you saw so I came into the HSL and turned down orange because if I turn it back, you see how orange that is? It's too much. Come down some and you'll get that that nice like brown. But see here. That's where it's too much. You're, you're like, it's not enough orange. Orange is a part of skin tone, all skin tone, regardless of if it's dark or not. But it's very much more prevalent in brown skin tone. Especially if it's a lighter skin brown, like my skin's very orange as well. Could you explain a Brenizer technique for those unaware? Brenizer technique is basically just like a panorama, but the point of it is um, you take a telephoto lens and you're trying to make the shot look like a wide shot. So you get the background blur from a telephoto lens like an 85 or a 110, but you get a wider shot. Because as we all know, if you use a wide lens, you're not getting a blurry background. But yeah, this, this is a beautiful shot. This is great. I'm gonna actually... This is gonna be part of my, my five star Do you suggest a new photographer establish a portfolio through Instagram or Squarespace or a physical portfolio book? Definitely not a physical book. Um, just cause unless you have a studio or somewhere where people are gonna come to you, I feel like a physical book is not really gonna do it anymore like, like it did. This is maybe black and white, I think. Man, there's always dudes who have to have their sunglasses on. Killing the whole wedding vibe. Like, oh, wow, what a nice wedding photo. Well, but then the two bros with their sunglasses on. But yeah, I don't, Instagram is a great place to show off your, but don't build your portfolio only on Instagram. And I'm sure you all oh, he's sponsored by Squarespace. But seriously, like, you need a website. I don't care what you build it on. Build it on whatever you want to, but a website is the way. And Instagram is an extension of your website, but you need a home base for your stuff. A friend of mine was shooting an event and swung his 7200 around and clocked someone accidentally in the face. <laughs> oh no, that's the worst. I did that once. Uh, I was at a wedding and a videographer and I took my 50, you know, the 50 F1. And I was just coming down to switch and I was like, pow, on the top of his head because he was like... He tucked in under me, but I didn't know he was there. Destroyed his head. He was fine, though. What is the shortcut to slightly move the sliders when adjust? So I'm just using the arrows, like the up, down, left, right arrow. 
So I'm using, I think it's up and down, yeah, and it goes in increments of five or 10 or something like that. And that's usually how I edit. Oh, is this the same wedding? It looks like a cute, cute walking photo. Great expression. Obviously, y'all already know what this photo needs. Magenta. Now, now again, this is like, let's look, let's watch this, right? Let's look at this. Look, look at the colors deep into your soul. So every time people use the preset and they'll just blow it on there like this and be like, great, this is not what it's supposed to look like. You still need to white balance. And again, white, it just needs to be an even clean white balance. Always white balance based off of the skin tones. So again, this is very green, which makes sense. It's kind of dusk and all these trees are growing off, of, throwing off a green tint. So I'm gonna magenta. And see there, the skin tones are starting to get a little bit more normal. Now the photo is still too cool, if y'all can tell. So I'm gonna warm it up as well. And somewhere in this range, it's, it's a little, people get on me. My photos are definitely heavy magenta. So they have a little bit of a like ready, overall pink tone to them. But still, everybody has their own like, kind of feel for what they want. But the main thing is try to get those skin tones at least looking like they're human, you know what I mean? People be in here having people looking all crazy, like get them looking human, like a person, like a, like a real human person. Yeah, there, there's our before and after. What is the shortcut? Oh, I looked at it. The most ludicrous prices I've seen are for official brand hoods. Huh. Any advice how to get more high-end clients? It all comes down to brand. It comes down to brand and how you present yourself, your website, all that stuff. The biggest thing too is like, oh yeah, here's the other ones. So see, okay, here we go, great example. The photo on the left, I edited. The photo on the right, the AI edited. I mean, you wouldn't know. You'd have no idea, honestly. I think this one got the white balance almost better. And see, now I wanna go back and re-edit this photo because it's like too green or something. Something's missing. The AI's over here showing me up, y'all. <laughs> but yeah, so when it comes to hiring clients, a lot of it, again, it's brand. And it's, it's, it's all brand, like think about it. Um, you look at a company like Apple, technically, maybe not now with all the M1 chips, but when Apple was on the Intel chips, technically, you could build your own PC at home for way cheaper than a Mac. But between the OS itself and the brand and just kind of what the brand made people feel, that's what people, they were fine paying higher prices, even though they could just go get a PC, build it themselves, and it would be fine. So it, it all comes down to brand, how you present yourself, your logo, your colors, everything. And that's a big thing people miss. They make a website and they just throw up photos because they're like, these are great photos. If the photo's not the style of weddings you wanna do, if the photos aren't the quality of weddings you wanna do, if the photos don't attract the type of couples you want to attract, then you're not lining your brand with what you want. And that's, that's a big deal. Like you have to, and that's what you want for high-end stuff. It's not that you have to have high-end stuff in your portfolio, but you have to be very picky about what you show. You could have a low end wedding, but have photos that look like they could have been high end. And that's all you really need. Before tweaking colors, masking, etc., do you batch any settings across the whole session? Um, I don't. I usually just kind of do it as I go. And I do, oh, this has that weird crop on it again. What is that? Why? Why Sony? Why Sony, why, there we go. Great shots. That's good stuff. 
These are also, these are getting five stars as well. Um, so here go all the Imogen, ima, ima, I keep saying Imogen, Imagine AI edits. So I did not edit these. The AI edited. Look at that. Look at that. Natural Fields preset. Edit it with AI. It's good, y'all. So many people say, oh, I wouldn't do that. Do it. Trust me. I feel like I'm giving away my creativity. If you're trying to get paid, your creativity don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be real. Creativity only goes but so far when it comes to paying you. You know what I mean? Especially if you're doing a style of photography like weddings. Creativity only goes but so far. Like, clients just want some good photos. The creativity is like rare, few and far between. Those are four by six. I don't even know. These are Sony again. I don't, Sony does weird stuff. Yeah, uh, well, this one is straightened already. Oh, yeah. Because imagine AI straightened it. I'm like, oh, like, how crazy. This is kind of a cool photo. It's, like, different. Um, but I, I want it black and white. Here, let's, let's make a virtual copy. Yo, how look how good this is. This was the AI, y'all. I didn't edit this. It's good. It's good. Look at that. AI said, I got you, bro. What song is this? File requ request has been closed. That is correct. I normally don't take any new photos during the stream. I actually forgot to take that out of the description. I'm sorry about that, y'all. Okay, um, let's see a black and white version. What y'all got? Color of black and white. Oh, you know what? I need to drop the, sh the highlights on this. Let me do this. Hope I get you that. Yeah. Yeah, hope yeah, hopefully you can get in there next time. Silly question, what is AI? Artificial intelligence. There's a program called Imagine AI. That's how they spell it. It does editing for you. It'll edit your photos for you. It'll even learn your editing style and edit the photos the way you would like them to be edited. <laughs> Color is more natural, please. <laughs> okay, so this one, AI, the AI did this one, and it's fine. If anything, I'll come in here and subject select. Uh-oh, that's not the subject. We'll leave it though, whatever. Um, and then the question is, do I want to, like, pull the shadows down or pull them up? Because see that? I can do that. Yo, look at that dynamic. Look at Sony with that dynamic range, though. That actually, I pulled the shadows way up and it looks fine. That's crazy. Yo, you would almost not even know that this was backlit. Before and after. I'm pretty sure Imagine AI has a free trial. The free trial is basically, it'll let you edit like 100 photos before it starts actually charging you. The green is really dramatic, so it feels better. Yeah, yeah, the greens stand out a lot uh, against that like blown out sky too. So yeah. Oh, see, they shot at ISO 125 too. So that's again, the advantage of um, shooting a, a good ISO. But yeah, that's why I do the subject select and bring up the shadows on them just a bit. Have them match the background a bit. 
Like, you would almost not even know that this was backlit at all. Oh, the trial is a thousand photos? That's really good. That's like a whole wedding. They, they're basically like, yo, try out a whole wedding. Like, try it for real. And that's the thing, because you'll do it. When I did it, I did about 750 photos my first time, and I was like, bruh, this is crazy. Justin Kim photo. Thank you so much. Thank you for that super chat. Good morning, Magenta Man. I used Aftershoot and Imagine AI for five weddings so far and love it. Yeah, let's go. Yo, and again, again, so many people want to sit there and be like, oh, I want to edit my own stuff. You're a business owner, a business owner. Like, just not waste your time. Also, it'll help you scale so much better. If you sit there and you spend less time doing the editing and stuff and pay for it so that you can edit more because think about it you could do like triple header wedding weekends for like a whole month like every weekend and be able to handle all of that because you're not really doing all of the editing that's huge for scale that means one person now can handle like 12 weddings in a month and not be totally destroyed outside of the physical aspect of it because they can get the editing done at a timely fashion rather than like imagine if you were editing 12 weddings that all came from the same month like yeah <laughs> you know like i've never done that and i never would want to Here we go with some wide shot. Hey, it's Flame with the dope shot. Yeah, always with the beautiful work. Um, again, just because I'm extra. And this probably is a hill, but I, I can't. I need that thing straight. Maybe it's not a hill. Yo, I love doing these type of shots. Look at that motion. Look at that leg. Look at this. Let's go. I love a good leg. Like, you see how much motion is conveyed in the legs? So good. Also, too... And this is something I didn't notice, and I, I never tell my couples to do it specifically. It just happens. You see how the, the opposite legs are like, which really, really gives the motion. That's good. Yeah, it's a hill, but I straightened it. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is great. This is beautiful. Good stuff. Uh... So we're going to subject select again. And we're going to pull up them shadows. Just a bit. And then we can pull shadows up for the whole thing. It feels... This is one of those like tricky... Super tricky... Man, that Sigma art be hating sometimes. Oh, you are at F1.4 though too. That's fine. Yeah, I think that's where it's gonna have to be. Here's our before and after. Honestly, we could like, these, these are those type of photos where you just get dramatic for no reason. Like you could select the sky and Where's my graduated filter? How does this, I don't know how this thing works no more. Oh yeah, the gradient. I don't know what I'm doing no more. Now I'm just over here like messing around. <laughs> wow <laughs> i'm sorry i'm i'm not a fan of heavy photo manipulation i'm just not um you can do it and it can look good people pull off some crazy stuff but for the most part especially when people are learning i see people trying to do like heavy manipulation and it just ends up looking bad like 
it ends up looking so bad. How do you import to Imagine AI after Aftershoot? So pretty much Imagine AI is just reading from your catalog in Lightroom. So what I do is I Aftershoot, call my photos, read the metadata in Lightroom from the call, and then from there you just pick the catalog and Lightroom kind of goes from there. John, I like the background music, where's it from? I, all my music on the live streams come from Epidemic Sound. I just find music, so there's a lot of stuff I use on my videos as well. There's this one artist named Joby. I love his, that's what's playing right now. I think it's like this, Joby. Maybe it's two Bs, Joby. I could look at it. Where's the info? Yeah, it's the one B, two eyes. He has stuff on um, iTunes. So you can check that stuff out there too. It's probably on Spotify as well. Are those pictures? Oh yeah, it almost looks like a window. What's this, Florida? This angle, this is, this is hurting me. Trying to get these lines straight. I guess you can't really totally get it straight like that, though. It's fine. Whatever. Always watching your videos. You have helped us so much with your BTS videos. We see things differently with Cash More. Awesome. Glad to hear it. I'm not a fan of pay per photo kind of deal, and I do like taking my time in Lightroom at a restaurant. And I mean, yeah, if you wanna edit, that's fine. Um, the biggest thing for me is it's all just about scaling. Like, you're, you're not gonna be able to edit like 100 weddings back to back by yourself. Like, eventually it's gonna get to a point where you need a team, so that's my main thing. What editing software are you using? This is Lightroom Classic. I was at a workshop this week and my camera bag got, oh, I saw it on your stories. Ruined by 35 and my laptop. Oh, that's horrible. So bad. Here's our before and after. Check out this ring shot. Good old F8, get that thing sharp. Look, you can even see how dirty it is. <laughs> Ta-da. Bump that clarity a bit. Drop this, because it's too, too red and orange, so I'm gonna cool it down. Look at that. And see, that's, that's what people miss, y'all. White balance is the answer to most things. Everyone wants to just sit here and like slap on a preset and call it a day. White balance makes the difference. Yo, is this that same song, Ian? What song is this? Oh, is this Sony with the weird, the weird crop again? But yeah, here's our before and after. And yeah, it was way too orange, so I dropped the white balance. Drop that, it was too warm, cooled it down. I shoot 1.2 group shots, just keep them all on the same plane. I mean, yeah, same thing. Like, 
for me for me a lot of the rules are a little too strict so like doing f8 only on group shots is a little too much um i'll stop down a little bit but i'll be pretty open um this feels like it wants to be black and white just because of the way it is but i guess we can we can try and do color too Yeah, it's something about the contrast of the photo that like, oh wait, is this white? Oh, okay, I thought that was supposed to be green and like the colors were just off. Yeah, I, I like black and white better. <laughs> song playthrough. Yeah, I don't. It keeps playing the same songs. I missed the deadline. Oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> black and white for me, especially just I city vibes give me that black and white all the time. Oh, I thought I was editing. Nice little ceremony area. And honestly, that, that's good where it's at. I think that's fine. Mmm. Throw some ice in this thing with your water. And since it's supposed to keep in the temperature, the water just gets like super cold. So good. <laughs> ah, nice. Beautiful shot. Definitely a five star. Love the expressions too. Great emotions on this photo. There's our before and after. We might. Did I level it out? I can't remember. I did. Great job. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I did it, mom. Yeah, this is great. Good stuff. Okay. Will auto look weird? Oh, auto said I can't do it. Um, so this one is not warm enough. That feels better there. Drop these oranges a bit. It looks like the focus might be missed a little bit. It looks a little soft. Um, This would be a good candidate for black and white as well. What is, I just now noticed this random petal. We all think color, black and white, black and white, color. <laughs> one day I'm gonna get a five star. <laughs> it's like the goal of the stream. I'm gonna get a five star one day. Did a couple ever ask you for a wedding venue suggestion for photos? So like 
they asked me for the for the venue is that is that what we're asking do you lens correct every time i do usually Uh oh my internet hold on let's uh Let's see if we can give my laptop priority real quick. Nice haircut, thanks. The hair was a little too long. I like it long though, so I'm gonna let it grow back out. I just had to, I had to cut it down and since my hair was pretty much locked up. I had to cut it under the locks. So this is too short for me. What's good? Been following for a minute. My first time hopping on a live stream. Yeah, welcome to the stream. Is Imagine AI for PC? I'm pretty sure it is. I haven't used the PC version, but it is on both Mac OS and PC. Ugh, Dutch tilt. Look at that. Don't even have to do nothing. Maybe warm it up a little bit. Yeah, they're looking a little dead in the skin. But see, this is one of those like you just happen to catch the photo type of thing. So Dutch Till is just what it is. Sometimes that happens. It's life. Black and white, maybe? I mean, it'll be fine either way. Um, again, we're gonna warm it up a little bit. Just so their skin doesn't look like they're zombies. We don't, we don't want that. Cute. Yeah, y'all y'all really came through this time submitting them uh some good photos. We got Olympus in the house. Micro four third. <laughs> I don't see a lot of Olympus most of the time. Cute photo, great expressions. Which lens do you think is better, 56 or the Fujifilm? I personally like the Fujifilm one better. Um, just overall, the feel just felt much better. Focusing on the Sigma was a little weird too, but but yeah, if you if you need a budget lens, them Sigmas, man. Oh, I slept weird. My neck and back are just jacked up autofocus is a bad it seemed like it um i will say when i was using the sigma lenses it was before they had firmware updates so it wasn't like the final firmware so i can't really i don't know exactly how the autofocus worked Well, here goes our magenta. Somewhere in that range. We can select our subject. Raise their shadows a bit. Not too much, we'll drop the shadows here. Make it still look natural. Warm it up a tad. 
sit somewhere in that range. Magenta is a little too hot for once. Do you do, do you use in camera sharpening like a default setting? Um, I don't believe so. I, I know sharpening is turned on in my camera, but I don't think that makes it makes its way to the raw fo the the raws is your black and white preset more punchy or more flat i i think it leans towards the flatter end it's not like super super punchy thank you for your videos i especially like the wedding behind the scenes oh yeah i got i got a couple coming up i definitely want to get at least one more out this year Lightroom seems to be going fast. I'm on that, um, the M1 Max, MacBook Pro. That thing is ridiculous. Like, I'm telling y'all. That's like even what I was saying earlier that like, you could get a PC that's cheaper than a Mac and be just as powerful. Now, the M1 Max and all that stuff, I wish I had a need for the, the studio. Them things are fast. And like, I'm over here live streaming at 1440p and also in Lightroom, no hiccups at all. All on the same computer. And it's just like, yeah, let's go. Um, the orange is a little much, but I do need to warm it up. They are overpriced. I mean, they're definitely overpriced, but the, the new, um, the new M1 Max and all that stuff makes it way more worth it at this point. My dream laptop, yeah. Yeah, I so I bought one, um, and my only regret was not getting a bigger, not getting a bigger uh, hard drive. Let's see, what did I get? So I got a MacBook Pro, I got the 14. And I'm pretty sure I got the 10 core. Cause I paid a good almost $4,000. I'm pretty sure I maxed this out and I maxed this out and I did one terabyte, yeah. So that's what I'm working with. That's what I have is the 10 core. I'm pretty sure. Um, M1 Max, where do I see? Yeah, number of cores, 10, eight performance and two efficiency. Where do you see the graphics? Where are my graphics at? graphics yeah 30 yeah so that that's what I got I should have got a bigger hard drive though I should have went with like a two terabyte at least also did you th think thank you for the presets you've made me fall in love with photography again awesome I want to get but see now that I have this thing decked out see if I knew they were gonna do the studio I wouldn't have gotten a decked out laptop because I do need a laptop. I edit a little bit while I travel, but I don't need one like that. So right now my laptop is being my main computer. But if I knew that this was coming out, I would have got this instead. Bad GPU issues? Well, now everything's off the M1 Max and it's, it's good. It's fast. Yeah, I would have copped one of these so hard. M1 Ultra 20 core, it's overkill, y'all. Do y'all know what I could do with that? 128 gigs, throw a four terabyte in that boy, or an eight, Woo! That's almost 10K, Woo! Can you get an external? Yeah, but it's, so the thing is, with these new Macs, the SSDs they put on them are dumb fast. So, basically all the speeds that they keep saying that this thing can do are negate if you're working off of external hard drives. So, and I'm already seeing it. Again, that's why I regret it. So like when I'm working in um, Final Cut, 
if I export and all the data is on the main hard drive and I'm exporting to the main hard drive, it is fast. It exports so fast. But if I'm on an external exporting somewhere else, I can clearly see how much slower it is. So that's why like if I were going to get this, this is what I would do. Like I would put a whole 10K on it and I would max out to eight. Cause I'm like, oh, just get externals. It's faster. It is totally worth it. It honestly, in my opinion, makes the whole difference. I mean, if anything, I probably could sell my laptop and get at least half the price of this one. But my laptop does everything I need it to do and I can, I can take it with me when I do travel. Because I do travel pretty often. <laughs> Why I got the shoes? <laughs> so this needs to be warmed up. Anytime, anytime when you're editing and the skin feels weird to you, like that's when you need to white balance. Man, I'm still on a Lenovo. <laughs> speed is killing me yeah it i just now paid off this uh macbook pro but that thing was that was rough but again investing in your when you have a business that's running and you're making decent money from it like all that stuff is justifiable like it's an investment to help your business out and on top of it is the tax write-off too so hey john how can i submit a photo to you i'm not taking any during the live stream I usually have submissions before the live stream. So this, the saturation feels like it's missing too much. So I'm actually going to turn it up a little bit. Yeah, it just felt like too desaturated. Cute. What do you use your desktop equipment for? Or do you still have it? Um, so my desktop stuff, I pretty, pretty much disbanded that. So I um, I switched. So I had a, a desktop and it was in a big case. So I took it out and I put it into a small case. So I still have my PC, but now it's just for gaming. And that's it. Like it's, I have it over there in the corner. It's just my little gaming PC now. Missed the cutoff, but I think I hit the bell so I can catch it next option. Awesome. Beautiful. We're gonna. Y'all already know me. Give me that center crop. And this is another great case. First off, we need magenta. And then now we're going to select the subject. Pull up these shadows on them. And then I can turn up the whole thing. There we go, there's our before and after. Are you planning to do another photo edit live? I would, yeah, I do these every month, pretty much. The only time I don't do a, a photo edit live is when I'm doing some kind of other live, like a website critique or portfolio critique. Um, but the goal for this year is to every month do one live stream and they generally happen close to the end of the month. So far, I've set the, the standard of the last Friday of every month is when a live stream is. Nice. This is that nice, like classic wedding photography. Classic, classy. Here we go again. You see warming it up. You see the skin tones.
honestly, at this point, I almost want to go ahead and schedule out the rest of the year. I usually schedule it out like a month before or so, but I might I might go ahead and just start scheduling out the majority of the year and see how that works out for me. Javier in here submitting too many photos. <laughs> Hold on, something skin tone, something skin tone here is happening. happening is it too warm yeah it's too warm magenta and too warm pull these shadows back a bit yeah javier man this dude submitted like 30 photos <laughs> they're all beautiful though great stuff i would stop editing them but luckily there weren't a whole bunch of submissions this time around so I'll let it slide. I'll let it slide for the moment. This is Lightroom Classic that I'm using. <laughs> yeah, edit this whole shit. Hey, can you edit this whole wedding for me? Hey, hey, I'm doing a live stream where I'm editing your photos and I open it up and it's like 500 photos. <laughs> oh, is this that weird crop thing again? Why? We're... This one probably was it too. I was wondering, yeah. I was like, you can't see nothing. That makes more sense. Could you, uh, could you edit these 500 photos? <laughs> Thanks for editing my wedding for me, John. <laughs> but my first wedding and just did the engagement shoot and edits off of your knowledge, awesome. Thank you for giving me the motivation to start my own business. Let's go. How do you pose your couples? Do you always do classic shots or more candid? I kind of do like half in the middle of everything. And it, it really depends on the vibe of the couple. Like some couples want to have very like posh-esque magazine pose style photos. So if that's what they want, that's what I'm going to give them. Other couples, they just want to have a good time. So the photos end up being a little bit more candid. So yeah, again, it really just, it depends on the vibe of the couple. Man, that 23F2, sometimes it's like my best friend and other times it just like, it just doesn't. It's a very middle ground. Hey, Chris is in the house. Recommendations for posing when bride is taller than the groom. It's a hard one. I, I normally, I don't really have to deal with that too often, luckily, but try to keep the same poses, really. There's just certain poses that just won't work at all.
But yeah, luckily I haven't dealt with that too often. Oh yeah, this was the one JPEG that snuck in there. I'm sorry. No JPEGs. Cute photo though. Here it goes. Dun 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 Deleted. <laughs> J Crew dropped their summer line. Still no much. <laughs> I was just they just sent me uh mail. Their little catalog mail thing. Check out the summer stuff. Great photo. Oh, nope, Lightroom, that's not it. Just just straighten it out a little bit for me, that's all. I think I'm gonna leave it silhouetted like that. Like, I don't wanna, oh yeah, pull out everything. Like, we can do it. You know, we, we can do it. We can select the subject, we can do that, and then we can we can pull them shadows way up. We can, we can, boom, 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 boom. You never would have known. Never would have known it was backlit. Need more magenta. <laughs> it's not enough magenta. I'm gonna go like judge a competition or something. Uh oh, is this edited already? Reset. Edit a whole competition and like every photo, I'm gonna be like, not enough magenta. Maybe maybe uh, WPPI will approve me to like do the judging, <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna do. Not enough magenta. Do you use lens correct on every edit? Pretty much. If it if the camera will allow for it. I mean, it knows the lens, then yeah, I do usually turn it on. Thanks for always being an inspiration. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Here's our before and after. great shot it might work as a black and white this rings crooked though that's one of those things too where like there goes that orange again do y'all see that difference but yeah, if, if you have the ring like all up in the shot like that, it's almost like, it's almost the main focal point. You gotta straighten that ring. And that's the little stuff that will catch you off guard. It'll kind of come out of nowhere. So like I've done that myself. So I, I totally know that. But you gotta, you gotta, gotta watch out for that stuff. Watching and learning all the way from the Philippines. Awesome. Thank you for joining. The tone in the sky. Yeah, this whole... Actually, seeing how the sky looks like this in this other one, 
because again i like my photos cooler so a lot of people don't like that but what i could do is um oops i wanted to select this guy colleague hired a photog for an event dude turned in totally unedited photos i've never seen anything that's horrible actually with canon do your presets work on all camera types it does um if you've been on the stream for a little bit now i've been editing pretty much all camera types this whole this whole stream so okay so i selected the sky the sky's separate now right so i can pull down the exposure a bit make them skies more dramatic pull up that contrast on the sky make it more dramatic some clarity make it more dramatic and then we're gonna warm up the sky only look at that we can even oh uh, we can oh uh, we can make it no <laughs> So again, normally I wouldn't do all these type of edits, but because now that it's so much easier to select the sky and stuff, may as well do it. So now we kept a lot of that drama in the sky and the coloring, but we also white balanced them and everything else for a more, a more cool edit. Black and white would work on this photo too. Don't forget about the exposure presets. Yep. I'm I'm hoping, I would like to, my dream goal is to have the natural fills preset in like most major programs. So Lightroom, Capture One, Exposure. Um, what's, there's a couple other ones and I'm forgetting their names. I've used them before. Like the one that will AI uh, put in the sky for you. I can't remember which one that is. This is definitely going to be a silhouette shot. There's like no other option. DXO, I don't even know what that is. We got the Philippines in the house. Are y'all just waking up? Any idea why the raw photos in my camera versus raw photos uploaded in Lightroom does not have the same color? Yes, because on your Luminar, yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. Um, so the reason the raw photo in your camera and on the computer look different is because in the camera, you're not actually looking at a raw photo. You're looking at a, a, um, a JPEG representation of the photo you took. So that's why, and let's see if any of these photos do it. I don't know if they're gonna do it, but usually that's why when you're looking at it here, you're just, you see it says embedded preview. So that's the JPEG version look of the raw photo. That's what you see in your camera. The moment you go to edit it, it's gonna change. And that's the raw photo. You see that? And it's like that. So like any camera system, no matter what it is, that's what's happening. The moment you start uploading, you're gonna see a different look. Because what you're looking at technically is not a raw photo. The back of your camera is always a deception. That's something to keep in mind. Nice shot. I would black and white this. That would be my choice. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if color would pull it. Like this contrast between them and the sky is nice. And color, it would, be, it would be cool, but I don't know. It's not gonna come off the way I want it to. Got in the habit of creating in-camera profiles that look like Ross. Yeah, so at least then you know what you're looking at. You're not getting hype about a photo and then getting home and being like, what is this? <laughs> How do you decide a photo is black and white? It's usually, it's a feeling thing. Some photos just feel black and white. It's it's that and it's also like a lighting thing. When like the light and the contrast of the photo are what's really popping off about the photo, I feel like that's what makes something black and white. 
Also, if it has like a classic feel to it, something about a classic feel to me ends up feeling more black and white. This is getting on my nerves. Hold on. There. <laughs> That's like all I could see was that top thing being like. But yeah, like these feel black and white to me. They all feel very black and white. Do you use compressed or uncompressed raw? Compressed. And they look fine. Again, as a wedding photographer, my main concern is like how many photos I'm able to take. Cute shot. And if anything, all we need to do to this is add a little bit of magenta. <laughs> Great photo, but it could use some more magenta. <laughs> Hey John, can you <laughs> can you critique my portfolio? Like, there's not enough magenta. Why am I not booking weddings? Cause there's not enough magenta. <laughs> oh, nice. This is a good photo. You want to know the true secret to booking more weddings? Just add some magenta <laughs> to it. Yeah, great shot. This looks like there was a strobe involved. I can't tell though. Ever use sepia? I've never used it. N yeah, I can't. Well, the biggest thing for me too, I like a cooler edit. So sepia is literally like against my being. It's against everything I stand for. <laughs> like, I just can't bring my soul to do it. I cannot. Shots like these, I tend to make black and white. These close-up shots, they just don't, they just don't work out. Your thoughts on Canon ADD for photography? I, so again, I always get these questions. Um, I don't know the ADD specifically. However, for me, it's not about what camera. The camera doesn't make anything. There's no wedding photography camera. It's all about how you use the camera and what you're using it for. Um, it's, it's all about the photographer understanding the limits of their own camera and what it can and cannot do. Um, so that that's my biggest thing. I'll go on forever. Actually, I need to make some videos about it because all these YouTubers be out there, oh, this camera's great. This is the perfect wedding camera. No, 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 no. The perfect camera is a camera. And then you, you have to know how to use it, which is again why I'm over here using crop sensors, winning awards and stuff. The people are over there like, it's crop. Your photos are great because it's not the camera. Uh, yeah, actually the last live stream, I went on a whole rant about that. I'm not gonna go on this time though. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it this time. This shot was a little a little overexposed. You could have you could have brought that exposure down a bit. Maybe you couldn't. Maybe your camera could only go up to 4,000 because this looks like, but if anything, obviously you could have stopped down. Great shot though. Nope, got some more wide shot Wednesday. Oh, see, we got another Canon 80D. I'm sure it's a great camera. I know I always, I'm sorry that like y'all want to ask me a simple question and I'm going to over here and like rant away your whole life. I just wanted to know if it was a good camera. <laughs> but then I, but then I asked John and he yelled at me. <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, any camera is great. You can make any camera work. You can do it. You just have to really understand like what the camera can and cannot do. Also, it depends on your own style. Like I know people who shoot with the Fujifilm GFX 
and they shoot most of their weddings like that. Whereas like, because I run and run and gun a little bit more, um, for me using the GFX is like borderline because it's it's just a tiny bit too slow for the way I approach weddings. So it doesn't mean the camera's slow, it's the way I approach weddings. And that's what it all comes down to. It's like, well, how do you shoot too? What do you need? So it's less of like the camera and more like, what are your actual needs on the wedding day? Like, how are you approaching everything? That's what makes the difference. If you were like, I wanna shoot 20,000 photos at every wedding and I make every photo I take into a GIF, you know, then maybe the Sony A1 might be the camera you wanna get because it shoots 30 frames a second and you could just like, you know. <laughs> But yeah, all of it comes down to that. Like, what do you need? What what are you doing? Hi, John. So I'm actually new to photography, now learning to edit photos. My question is, when is a photo right and over edited? It's, so that's a very subjective thing. It depends on the person. Um, I personally, low than over edited photo so like even if you're watching me edit now my edits are very minimal i'm like let me put a preset on it my preset is pretty much just giving me color tones then i'm coming through and saying hey let me white balance because their skin doesn't look all the way right changing the exposure a little bit and the shadows a tad and and that's it that's it and you can do a lot like I can come in and I can add things to make it look like the light is coming from certain ways and I can add vignetting and I, and that's, that's my biggest problem. A lot of people teach a lot of that stuff. And what happens is that someone who's newer, who doesn't know, think that they think that they have to do that on every photo to make it look good. Whereas in my opinion, you should be trying to get it looking pretty much right in camera. And then after that, it's more about just keeping the edit nice and clean. The photo should speak for itself, not the edit. So many people like, I feel like they, they use the post-production to make the photo. And in my opinion, that means the photo probably was bad and you had to do some craziness to make it like a decent photo. Like your photo should be legit in the first place. Shooting fun, great images of me and my family with a crop camera and 10 megapixels. What magic I <laughs> First comment ever from me. Know the exposure triangle rule of thirds and camera functions. Exactly. And like that matters more than what camera. Any camera can do whatever you need it to. And <laughs> John's second voice says me. <laughs> my pocket cam is a Lumix G100. It takes photos that I can use professionally. Image quality isn't the reason I use Pro Gear professionally. People don't realize John's the perfect data color vision. <laughs> beautiful shot. Oh yeah, see? Flame with the beautiful coming through. Coming through with them dope shots. Uh, it feels pretty good already. I feel like it's a little orange, yeah. I could bring the shadows up. See, okay. So here's a per, this is why I do subject select. If I bring up the shadows here, because everything is backlit, if I bring up the shadows, it does not on the trees too, and it just like sucks the life out of the whole photo. I like that contrasty shadowy that's happening in the background. I don't want to get rid of that. So because of that, I'll come in here and select the subject and then raise the shadows on them alone. But I don't do it so much that it's like clearly obvious, just enough so it pops off and I can have them stand out a little bit, but it keeps the shadows here in the back. Do I want to cool this off? Maybe that feels about good there. That feels pretty good there. 
I like, yeah, I love cool greens. Again, I, I prefer a cooler edit. I'm always the guy like, golden hour, wow. I'll take a golden hour photo and cool it down real quick. <laughs> I actually, I don't prefer golden hour. Too much orange everywhere. <laughs> Not enough magenta. <laughs> Is there a specific criteria to submit photos? There's not. Now the submissions happen before the live stream, so I don't take any during live stream, but as long as the photo is safe for work, y'all can submit whatever you want to to me. Um, just like no nudity and stuff. Like we're here on YouTube. YouTube ain't trying to see that. Nothing violent, nothing with nudity. Other than that, y'all can submit whatever you want to. It doesn't have to be wedding photos. You're so right about the photo being good on the first, but yeah, there's a lot of, and I mean, you can do cool stuff with post-production and it's cool, it's its own art and it's fine. But I just feel like a lot of people get misled when they're first starting out, especially if they're trying to do something like wedding photography or something of that sort. Like you, you don't have to edit it that hard, you really don't. When it comes to wedding photography, people just want to see a good edit. They just want a nice photo. You know what I mean? And sometimes, yeah, they do want something more dramatic. But you still don't have to do crazy post-production. You really, you don't have to. There's so much gatekeeping in wedding photography, and it gets old real quick. And it doesn't mean you don't have to be good, or you can be good. But at the end of the day, the majority of people just want good photos of their wedding day. That's what matters to them. Just give me some great photos of my wedding day. <laughs> John got mad at me for asking what's the best camera. <laughs> I just wanted to know the camera. <laughs> In 2022, your average number of booked weddings, clients per month. I have like, what, it's 2022 now? I only have like six more weddings this year. So I, I wanted to take less weddings so I could focus on YouTube and things like that. So I priced myself out of the market and I haven't been booking yet. Um, I think half the reason I'm not booking is because my brand's not aligned correctly. So I'm working on that right now. But I have like no weddings booked for 2023 for the most part. And... I only have six weddings for the rest of the year, so <laughs> I don't have a lot of weddings. I did start out as a graphic designer before venturing into wedding photos, videos. Oh, cool. Photography professor once said the first most important thing is getting it right in camera. Exactly. And I mean, it's really true. That's why I like shooting film. It's really, it's still helpful even in the digital world. A lot of people, oh, I shoot film. You can learn a lot. You can learn a lot shooting film. A lot that you can apply to the digital world. Those are before and after. This feels, what's happening here? Is that just how it ended up? It almost feels like there's a flash. It looks. This black line makes it look almost like a green screen. How crazy. Great shot. If magenta isn't around 70%, are you even edited? <laughs> what is this? That's what, well, John, what's the best camera for, for, for does it shoot magenta? <laughs> nice haircut, thank you. My hair, my hair was a little too long. It was getting too long for me. So I had to, had to cut it back, grow it again. That's usually, that's my process. I like having my hair long. So generally I'm always cutting it and then letting it grow for like two years again. And then it gets too long, so I cut it again. And then another two years goes by of growth and then it gets too long again, so I cut it.
The struggle for me is getting it extra crisp, that crispy in camera. The main thing is usually, um, it's the lens and it's the f-stop. Like, you may just have to stop down more often on your photos. Now, see, look, a photo like this I love. Why is that? Because it's already, it already wants magenta. It needs it. The whole photo is basically magenta already. I can just turn magenta all the way up. No, just... <laughs> That's why I love when I do a wedding and the bridesmaids are all wearing some kind of like blush and I'm like, ha ha, magenta. <laughs> Magic is short for magenta. <laughs> What's wrong with my photos, John? I feel like they never turn out right because you ain't got enough magenta. <laughs> Y'all crazy. I'm about to I'm about to start the the YouTube membership stuff. Call it Magenta Fam or something. <laughs> Beautiful shot. Here's our before and after. You get a magenta shirt when John really. <laughs> Are you just delivering in an envelope at the end? Oh, magenta members, I like that. Uh, I feel like, in an envelope? You mean like, like I print the photos and like ship it in the mail? I saw the recent vid, you use the obstacles printer. Do you wear magenta accents when you shoot? <laughs> I don't, but I need to. I'm about to go get a magenta suit though. Can I buy a camera with more magenta? <laughs> This might be black and white. Yeah. It just, it has too much feel to be color, you know? Like it would work in color. Is this thing edited already? Is that how it came out of camera? It looks pretty good. Yeah, I feel like I feel like the black and white gives it that feel. Oh, Instax images. I, I you know, I don't use them. I need to start bringing my Instax with me, honestly. That'd be cool. I wonder if people would be like, "Why is this dude taking pictures on an Instax?" <laughs> Order a matcha. It's too much green. <laughs> Sir, it's a matcha. Ah! Why is it so green? Uh, what happened here? Yeah, the shutter was too slow. So this, this is another, this is a great example of what I talk about with how, because people teach settings in a certain way and it's not taught in like a, think about the outcome. It's just like, this is the best settings. Um, so what happened here with this photo is, so they're running towards the camera, I'm assuming, having fun. And aside from if the camera itself missed the focus, which it probably didn't, it looks like the camera got the focus. It's 
motion blur this happened and this this is the stuff that gets people oh why aren't my photos crisp but they're always blurry it's this kind of stuff because someone told you iso 100 is the best image quality which it is but you don't always need the best image quality sometimes it's like nitpicking for no reason all that would have had to happen here for this photo because see it's dark it's like dusk this is probably blue hour this is after golden hour it looks like and or it was like super overcast hold on let's see if we can is the time on here yeah 6 25 p.m in may it probably was overcast. so it was overcast so the sun was already going down it was pretty dark but i'm assuming because you have to shoot at iso 100 so the shutter had to be 160 because that was the only way it was going to get enough light in all that would have had to happen here was you raised your ISO to maybe 400. Oh my God. And you could have brought this shutter up to three, 350, somewhere in that range. And it would have been able to capture this without all this motion blur. And that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. And what are the best settings for weddings? Or why don't you show your, your settings on the photos? Because unless you understand the point of the settings, you're gonna be looking at them like, Oh, this is what I set my settings to. No, it's it's a moving thing. It's all based off of what's happening and the lighting at the time of. That's why I hate, I hate it. I'm sorry, but I'm not a fan of the whole showing your setting. I don't think it really helps people outside of someone who understands what the settings do. That's what I think is missed. People teach settings to get a right exposure, but they don't teach as much based on what it does you know like yes this was a correct exposure but for the shot it was the wrong settings and that that's the biggest thing i think no one talks about that everyone always wants to like get the right settings for the correct exposure what about getting the settings for the right photo like what about that so yeah, that's what happened here. The shutter needed to be higher. You need to do a workshop on this. I mean, yeah, I I, I need to. I, and I just, again, it's, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people look at me and they're like, oh, this dude's not even a professional. You don't know what he's talking about, da, da, da. But the, what I'm trying to get at, this is not for tenured photographers. Tenured photographers, at least, I would hope, know what they're doing. I'm talking about the new people who end up getting misguided because of how some people teach. There's nothing wrong with it. They're trying to help you. But people sometimes miss the point that your settings is not a static thing. There's a lot of factors in going on, and but a lot of people teach from a very static standpoint. And what I've come to realize, at least from my opinion, what it really comes down to is that photography uses both sides of the brain. People like to act like there's like a non-creative side, but I don't believe that. I believe everything is creative. Anything you're creating, anything you're making is creative. And then there's two different types of creativity. There's like the fully art creative side, the spontaneous feeling, emotional, you know, like, there's that creative side, and then there's the other side of the brain, which is the analytical, engineering, mathematical creativity. It's still creativity. People look at math and like, oh, it's not creative, it's creativity. Look at architects, look at all designers, look at engineers. That is creativity. It's just a very different kind of creativity. And so photography has both of those. And both approaches are fine and right. But as a photographer learning, you have to realize that there's both sides happening at all times. And I feel like, especially, especially, not as much now so, but over the years, because photography education and just photography in general was so male dominated, and men tend to sit on the analytical creative side, that's how everybody taught it. And so people think all that kind of stuff. Oh, ISO 100, you have to shoot at ISO 100. It'll get you the best photo. No, it won't. It gives you 
yes, the best quality, the best dynamic range, you get the best of the camera, but if you go up away from it, it's not gonna hurt you. Also, again, in our digital world, like no one's gonna see that. Like you don't always need the best. I've talked about it before, but there's like a level of expertise that anyone can get in any type of art. And until you get to a certain level of expertise, you actually can't see the difference. So like the gauge between what's bad and good and decent and better, those are clearly obvious. Most people can see that, but the difference between what's excellent and amazing and like top tier godlike awesome, unless you pass that threshold, Everything in this like it's really good range is hard for people to see unless you're that good. Like you have to be that good to see it. So the guy who's very good and the guy who's godlike, most people can't see that. They they don't see the difference. They just they literally can't. But someone told you ISO 100's the best. Most people can't see that. They literally can't tell the difference. Again, it's like you got a 4K TV and an 8K TV, and it's like, whoa, it's the best thing ever. The TV, both TVs are 55 inches. 8K is barely gonna look better. You can't see it. You can't see the difference. Unless you're like, you got like the best eyes and you like know the things that make the difference, the minute things. It's the same as listening to music. Listening to like full res, lossless, crazy audio versus like decent you know compressed stuff if you're not an audio engineer trained for years listening to the best audio all your life you can't tell the difference so it's that same thing newer photographers here or professional i always shoot at iso 100 because it's the best quality well this person's the best of the best so i must do the same no let me stop though <laughs> Oh, this thing in black and white though. Okay, let's let's do a black and white version. But yeah, that so that's my whole thing. Like, I want to teach you how to practically know why you're setting your camera, why you are, and what outcomes you're coming from it. That's where you need to start. Again, you need to understand it. That's it. After that, if you're like, because I know how the settings work and I'm gonna do ISO 100 because of X, Y, Z, that's cool, that's fine, do it, please. But if you're new and you're just like, well, they said ISO 100's the best, no, no. Cause then you'll get a blurry photo and you'll wonder why. Funny enough, I found photographers putting their settings on their photos as helpful because I often make assumptions about settings only to find out that they haven't used ISO 100 or widest aperture. I mean, yeah, that's, if anything, that's what the, <laughs> but see the, again, the problem, and it's not that I'm not gonna show my uh, settings cause I'm actually, I'm working on some full wedding days that I did. Um, Yeah, this is definitely gonna be black and white. I wasn't able to get a videographer to come with me. So I have some full wedding days that I'm doing where it's just GoPro footage. And I'm gonna put that on Patreon. And if I do a YouTube join page, I'll put it on there too. But I'm gonna show, show the settings on those. Um, whenever I do a course, I'm gonna show the settings on those as well. But see, when I do a wedding photography course, I'm gonna be explaining more about the photos. And that's, that's my whole point. Just the settings by themselves is pointless. It helps nobody, depending. If you're like intermediate, it, it can be helpful. But like for starters, I think it's just gonna make them get misconceptions about things, black and white or color. Whereas like, if I'm sitting down telling you, because I was in this room and it was a little dark, so I raised my ISO a little bit to help me get more shutter so that things weren't blurry. See, that's different. That's me telling you why. The why, that and having the settings and the why, that's good. Having the settings by themselves make people think they, they're just like, oh great, when you're inside, set it to ISO this and that and do it to no, there, there are no specific settings. It's not a static thing. That black and white is hitting. Y'all, all these black and whites that I've been doing, y'all been in here. 
with these dope black and whites. That definitely gets a five star as well. Oh, I wonder. So this is that same session. This is this session, right? But check out the settings difference. So before, and so I'm assuming this is like aperture priority or something. Something's happening here. So before ISO is 100, shutter's at 160. This doesn't make sense because it's obviously dark and they're running. Shutter should have came up. Now ISO is at 1250, which is mad high. And shutter is at 160 still. So I don't know what's happening here. I know they're losing light because it's dusk. Let's see how much later this photo is. Oh yeah, this was much later, that's why. It's like an hour later. So they're like, yeah, basically it's dark and they're like, oh my God, it's dark. This is one of those like, I told them we can do a sunset setting or a sunset session, but, the, but it was mad cloudy. So it got dark earlier than I thought it would. That's what this is. 1250 is a bit high. But again, they were trying to like get whatever light they could because there was no light. No, oh, come on. Come on, Lightroom. What was that? So this needs a bunch of warmth. And also a bunch of magenta. Oh. Uh oh, what's happening here? It's too blue. It's unable to be saved. So hot tip, if you're taking your photos and it looks this blue in camera, shoot in Kelvin. Don't shoot in auto white balance. Once your camera starts doing that, it has no idea what's happening no more. The camera's like, oh my God, everything's blue. I don't know what to do. This is one of those, I might have to just turn it black and white photos, y'all. See that, how do you choose, hey John, how do you choose if a photo's black and white if the white balance is jacked? <laughs> when the white balance is straight trash, black and white. But no, we're, it looks like we're saving it. Yeah, that, that's doable, we can. The camera, oh, the camera's like, oh! Help me, please. The camera basically is like, excuse me, um, you shouldn't be shooting this late at night. <laughs> oh, nice. So first off with this shot especially this yeah this squared off needs to be as straight as humanly possible we need this whole thing to be straight And I want to keep it silhouetted, so I'm actually not really going to raise the exposure too much. Because, yeah, I could do this. And it was shot at ISO 100. Like, we can do this. What y'all know about dynamic range? What y'all know about dynamic range? But it kind of loses the vibe of the photo. You know, like, it, it kind of loses the vibe. So we're going to come back here like this.
What y'all think? I shoot a lot of museum events. One of my secrets is setting a custom white balance. That's how you fix the otherwise weird lighting you get from this. Yeah, exactly. Before is better. <laughs> Natural feels LUT, man. I don't even know if I could make a LUT. That'd be dope though. This would probably work as the black and white as well. <laughs> they took this shot but I don't know I don't know if he was about that life they threw him up and he was like I made a bad choice <laughs> he's like oh god they actually did it Who calling me? Is it important? Oh, it's not important. So many, I get so much like spam calling. Hands down the most annoying. So my first wedding last Monday here in England, and I have to say I'm proud of the images I achieved. Nice. You're such an inspiration. Yeah, let's go. I'm glad I could help out in any kind of way. Hey, John, what did Natural Fields version 1 look like? Any old photos? Ah, uh, no. I mean, I guess... Here, let's see. The closest thing I have to what would be like... Actually, no. I don't even think that was... I don't even think that was um, natural feels now that I'm thinking about it. My first, uh, my first ever Fuji film wedding. Yeah, I don't think this was natural feels. But this was from my first wedding that I actually shot full Fuji film. Yeah, this was pre natural feels. Here's a Brenizer. Yeah, see, I'm a creature of habit. I've been doing this is 2017. I've been doing this like Brenizer at the at the ceremony for like a hot minute now. K 
camera calibration in the camera? I'm not sure what we're referring to. It <laughs> still got the crushed green. Yeah, if, if my photos didn't have crushed greens, it hurt my feelings. So that was like, it was a must have. Frozen, oh no. Some watch buy shot Wednesday. This photo's a little rough as far as just the photo itself. Yeah, this is another one of those cases where I, I would probably black and white it just because I don't know if that white balance can be saved. Like that's that's pretty it's pretty bad. Ever done a tutorial on doing Brenizer with people other than the subject in the frame? You mean like a group of people? You would just pretty much have to tell people not to move. Yeah, this, it's, it's too rough of a photo to not black and white it. I'm surprised there's so much grain. It looked like there was a lot of light. So here's another tip with the preset. Y'all see how you can clearly see that the highlights are crushed. So you see I brought that out some. So that's what you'll want to do if a photo is like very much direct. You don't want to pull it all the way down like that if it's direct sunlight. For photographers who need to get small gigs, where would you recommend marketing for clients? Um, again, I started with stuff like, um, oh my goodness, my brain's not working today. Like Thumbtack, I use stuff like that. That's great for small, cheaper gigs, for practice and for building a portfolio. Do you ever feel stuck in your editing process? Uh, no, but that's because I don't, I don't try to like recreate anything. Like I don't try and do new things. I'm just trying to get the thing edited and done. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I see my favorite color. <laughs> oh, hey, it's Kobe. That is your submission. You submitted my one true love, magenta. <laughs> look, look how much I can notice. <laughs> Photo doesn't even look heavy magenta because there's so much magenta already in it. <laughs> When the raw photos are uploading in Lightroom, I just, so Lightroom's not adding anything. What you're just seeing is the actual raw photo. When you're looking at the back of your camera, that's a JPEG preview. That's not the actual raw photo. When you go into Lightroom, that's the actual raw photo that you're seeing. Great photo. Is that Javier again? Yo. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Lightroom, are you good? What happened? Uh-oh, did I do something? Why is the information not showing up no more? Okay, I don't. How many photos did he submit? It's like the majority of the submission. Oh my goodness, bro. 
Is it all of this? Bro. Look, he got all these. He got like, where are the other ones? He did all these. What else he had? He had a couple more up here, right? Was that it? This bro submitted 10 photos. This bro submitted half his portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> he submitted the whole shoot. <laughs> He's like secretly, cause like the names of the photos spread them out. Cause normally it just has the name on it. So all the photos would be grouped together, but he spread them out throughout the thing. So that I would like <laughs> slowly edit all his. It's like, yeah, I'm just gonna outsource these photos to John real quick. Not enough magenta. Also, those shadows are rough. Do you pay attention to the ratio of black and white versus color photos? I, I try to, but for the most part, there's always gonna be more color. There's not really gonna be that many black and whites. <laughs> Submit 10 photos for each live. <laughs> Edit a whole wedding over time. <laughs> have you ever had a client that doesn't like your editing style? I have once and it taught me a lot. Um, I usually, when I meet with my couples, that's actually the video I just put out recently. But when I meet with my couples, I really stress the fact that like, make sure you look at my photos and you like them, like everything about them, the colors, the, um, you know, the, the way stuff is cropped, the black and whites and how they're grainy, you know, like make sure you like it all. Don't come back to me a day later and be like, actually, John, I don't really like how these are edited because it's like, well, you should have looked at it before you booked me. <laughs> this dude's just like trolling me. I'm gonna stop editing his photos. <laughs> I'm like, man, why you submit? Why you submit 10 photos? Are these sony crops bro i can't good photos though it's nice nice classic wedding photography <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's gonna go back and watch the videos. I'm gonna go back and watch the live stream and just like plug in the settings that I had. Great. Raise the magenta some. Raise the exposure. Awesome. I got it. Yeah, this, this Sony crop thing is weird because I'm, I'm always like, why is it so tight of a crop? And he's like, oh, it's the Sony. Oh, magenta. Boom. There it goes. Ooh, this is rough. What happened? No flash? Must have been no flash. This definitely, so again, the way I do flash, cause again, I use flash on my camera. I don't necessarily need off camera flash. I don't need the whole room to be light. So with your, 
with your ISO raised like it is, this is a little too high, but with ISO raised, you see how it's picking up all the ambiance? And that's what I usually want. And then what I would have, because they're also backlit, this dude back here has a light. Um, you would want the flash on your camera with the mag sphere to light up the things closest to you, which would be them. And that's what would save this photo. Half the reason why this photo is so jacked is because they're backlit and it's inside. And the photographer clearly is like trying to get light. It's like, oh no, there's not enough light. Um, so yeah, it's, it's gonna, yeah, it's all muddy and it's just the worst. And there's no way, there's no way for me to really save it. This has way too much magenta. Cause yeah, the only, and the only way to save it, there's, there is no way to save it. They need front light. So this is one of those cases where I would black and white it and just call it a day and be like, there, there's your photo. Cause it, it just, you can't save that. The ISO is like 25. 100 it's just total mush got some foreground blur i don't know what this balloon is so i would crop in a bit just to get rid of that this also feels black and white but we can color it also Hey man, thank you very much for spending time with us. We learn more and more about magenta. <laughs> Is it possible those photos were shot in 916 ratio in the camera causing you to have, I, I'm not sure. It's always Sony, Sony shots that do that though. That's all I know. This is a great shot. This definitely is five stars. our before and after keep it nice and simple yeah I cropped that out in the final as well yeah yeah that one little balloon was a little distracting it was a great photo that I love the foreground blur on it or like just the foreground like the leaves and stuff great cropping not cropping uh framing cute this looks like the same session. You can really, yeah. The edits usually, it just adds a little bit. Like we don't need a bunch. I like to keep stuff looking at, which again, that's why it's called natural feels. Like I just want it to feel almost the way it was. Oh man, Amanda. Almost three hours in, I couldn't submit this time, but I am learning so much. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. I also, the storm went away and the clouds are leaving. And now my exposure is too hot. Thank you so much. Yeah, I hope this is a, a nice time for learning for you all and just hanging out and chilling with some cool vibes and, and magenta beautiful shot as well I took a shot just like this with a tree just like this the only thing that would have made this more epic if it if it was a wider um, lens rather than a 50 uh, this might be warmed up a bit but I don't want to lose the whiteness of those flowers what camera am I using for the stream this is my Fujifilm X-T3 with the new 33 f 1.4 on it <laughs> or hammers. Only thing would make this photo more epic is if it had magenta. <laughs> um, it. Let's see if it'll work here. Sometimes what I like to do to make things really white is suck the yellow out of them. Yeah. You see how white the flowers got with no yellow? 
the only thing you have to be careful with that is that sucking the yellow out too can like mess up people's skin tone sometimes. But it looked like it was fine here. But yeah, you see how white it got them things really like just all the way white. So that was in my HSL. So that's HSL is um hue saturation. Wow. Blah, blah. Hue saturation and luminance. So in the saturation, I just sucked all the saturation out of the yellow. So basically this photo has no yellow in it right now. Would you ever use a mask in those situations? That would be the best choice. Um, but the hue saturation, it affects everything. So even if I did come here and select the subject, Yellow is still being pulled out of the whole photo. Um, so if any, like, I don't know if there's a way, I guess with the hue here, I could bring some more yellow back in. I'm not sure how I would do that actually. Cause I don't think you can HSL separate on something you selected. I'm pretty sure you can't. So I don't know what you would do. Here goes the same session again, great shot. want to keep that as nice and straight as possible. I also want to keep it as centered as possible. This again, and it, it seems like this photographer only had a 50 for this session. Um, but yeah, I would have liked to see this shot wider. more nice foreground blur or as my wife likes to call this shot this is the the creeper shot when you shoot through the trees like that oh y'all already see it too much green not enough magenta raise them shadows up a bit And see this, again, I don't do a lot of this, but like, that just, that's too much. So I'll usually come in and clean that stuff up a little bit. You can even suck the yellow out of this too, but then the leaves are gonna look all weird. It like changed it. You see how it took out all the, just like the whole Use mask to sharpen? No, and that's mainly because again, I don't sharpen in Lightroom. This is a DNG, but I feel like, I don't know if this was raw in the first place. So I don't know if I can save this photo. Yeah, this feels like a JPEG. I, yeah, I don't think this is gonna work. Yeah, this is a JPEG. Great shot though, but we're gonna have to get rid of it. Beautiful shot, this is definitely five star. This feels like a styled shoot. Oh, this is Fuji, what is this? Yeah, good old X-T3. Keep those shadows in control while we pull up that exposure. And then just a touch of magenta. <laughs> Before and after. This photo would also work as a black and white. Hold on, I can pull those shadows out a little bit. That, yeah, that's a gorgeous shot. But see, so again, talking about settings so in this case shutters at 1 100 but that's fine because one off this lens has image stabilization in it and also this is more of a static styled posed shot nothing's moving so that's okay if anything they could have dropped the iso a little bit if they really wanted to 
but that makes sense. Whereas, like, if people are moving or walking or running towards you, your ISO should definitely not be down by, like, 160. <laughs> Ever find yourself drifting toward a raw image kind of look? But to have be mindful going too far? Not really. I do like my photos to look edited. I'm taking shots every time a photo needs more magenta. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know if that's safe for people. That's not that's not the drinking game you want to play. <laughs> Where's the hair? I cut it off. It, it was too long. It was too long for me. So I'm gonna grow it out again. That's my process. Cause I like my hair long. So I usually it gets long and then it gets to like the perfect place and it stays that way for a couple of months. And then it gets too long and then I cut it. Was this really not a styled shoot? This is giving me styled shoot vibes. Well, y'all already see it. What does this photo need? <laughs> Magenta. ISO 1000. This shutter could have dropped some. I mean, it is at F5. But yeah, this shutter could have dropped some, which could have dropped the ISO a little bit. Just a bit. Like 250. Which could have brought this back down to like 850. <laughs> yeah. I know. But my hair is so unique. I know. That's always the sad. Whenever I get to the point where I'm like, time to cut it, it's always sad because it's like, ah. Cause I like my hair when it's long, but yeah, it gets to a point where it's like, okay, it's time to cut. And then there's like a couple of months of me just being like, I don't like my hair. Did your hair ever get in the way of a shot at a wedding? No, but it, it has some of my seconds. Sometimes will try and take a photo and they're like, oh yeah. Do you ever need to shoot fireworks at a wedding? What's your approach? You know, I have not done fireworks. I've done um, like luminaries and sparklers, but not fireworks. But for fireworks, what I would do, cause so for fireworks, fireworks look good when you have a slower shutter. You get that nice like motion on them. Also it's gonna be dark anyway. So a slower shutter is gonna give you more light. So my approach, and see this, this again, this is what I was talking about with setting, settings. And it's about what's happening. So I would tell the couple, I need you all to pose and not move. Like I would tell them what they have to do. Cause again, when you do certain things, cause the people are always mad. Oh, John, you always like pose everything. Nothing's really candid. If people are doing sparklers or luminaries or fireworks, it is kind of for the moment, but really let's be real. It's for the picture, you know? And if your couples understand that when you're like, hey, this is what I need from you to get the picture of the fireworks, they're fine with it. They get to experience the fireworks still, but for a split second, I need you all to stand here and hold each other and do not move. And then I would just slow shutter handheld. My hands are pretty steady, so I would just drop it to like 60, one over 60, and then just shoot it like that. Maybe have a loom cube on the top to light them up a little bit, but then also have it low shutter to capture the fireworks in the back. That's at least what I would do, but I've never done it. But that's already how I would, I would approach it the same way I would with a sparkler. I shot four or uh, fireworks four times this year. Wow, four times? I've never had a couple do that. I'm doing one next week where the bride's dad is rigging up fireworks by himself. <laughs> that's scary. Especially if like they're gonna be drinking. So all night they're, oh, this is the roughest. This is what it's sunlight. Got side lighting though, so it's, it's safe. I would have made him take his glasses off though. At least for one photo. Can't have your girl over there squinting by herself. How you gonna do that? How you gonna leave his wife like that? Sorry, you can squint. I got my sunglasses. 
Oh, that's it? That's the end? Wow. I'll try with the loom cube and see how... Yeah. Basically, look. Low shutter as much as you feel like you can handle. Because you're going to get motion blur. So you have to tell your couple to, not to move too much. Um, loom cube to light them. Don't have the power all the way up. Just enough to light them. Because with your shutter so low, the, the point is the fireworks. You want them to kind of be like not as illuminated. The loom cube is just to help them. Oh, did I tell you? Loom cube just released a new product. I need to make a video about it. They just sent it to me. They made a, um, so this is my, this is my favorite Loom Cube, the Go. But they made an RGB version of it. So you can do like multiple colors and stuff. So it's like a smaller RGB one. Is this that song again? Go away. We didn't have too many five stars this time around. Got a bunch of verticals this time too, which is not normal. These are gorgeous, y'all. Look at these shots though, let's go. Remember too, this one right here was edited by AI. I didn't do this one. Great emotion, too. Y'all did really good with the emotion. I don't know what prompts y'all use, but this is great. Ever had to shoot a hot, humid wedding? Everybody, everybody sweating. <laughs> Usually, I tell people to just have, like, a napkin or something by so they can, like, you know. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's go through the export process again. I still, I feel like I want to, feel like I want to do something with the colors here. So I already did the orange, so it's not too orange. I feel like that green. Is that even changing anything? Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, I want that green to pop off against that orange. I guess that's as good as it's gonna get. Do you use the RGB for more fun stuff? That's what I would do, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna select all my photos. And we're gonna export. So again, my settings, the files of JPEG, sRGB always, quality 100%, no resize, resolution 300 PPI. That's for delivery. That's how I give photos to my couples. Sharpen for screen is standard, and then we're gonna open an exposure, and that's where we actually add our sharpening. Columbia, Columbia in the house. I'm shooting a graduation event on Sunday indoor hall. I'm hoping it's lit enough. Any suggest recommendations? Again, my go-to always is a, a a flash with a mag sphere on it if you have one. It's the most simple solution. Um, even in my, my next full wedding day video that I'm currently working on, there's a, there's a section where like the couple in it, we're like, we're in the darkest room, right? No light, no windows at all. The darkest room. And they decide that they want it like his mom shows up randomly and then they want to do like a toast together. So I have to whip out my flash real quick, throw the max for on it and take photos. And that's enough. Having that on camera flash with a max for is like, it's a save every time. This is a great photo. This is good. That orange on orange is hard to deal with sometimes, but Natural Fields came through there and got it. Oh look, see, and then if I wanted to be extra, and I can do this, some, I can do this at the exposure side too. So when I'm already dealing with a JPEG, I can come through and 
you know, clean it up just, just a little bit. Again, I don't do any like magazine type editing, like studio perfect frequency separation. I generally don't do that type of photography. So for the most part, I'm keeping people's skin natural. It's like commercial stuff. I really, I just don't. But I will come in and clean up stuff a bit. Because this shot is a very commercial-esque shot. But yeah. So now that doesn't stand out as much. This is clean. This, her shirt here coming over is kind of annoying. But stuff happens. South Africa in the house. Do you use flash manual or TTL? Manual, always, never TTL. TTL be spitting out way too much power. Also too, when you're not TTL, you can have the, uh, when the power is lower, your recycle times are faster. So see, this is, I've exported it. It has a little bit of screen sharpening. And then afterwards I add my sharpening and grain preset, which also, I don't know if y'all saw that contrasted edit. Yeah, it adds just, just a bit of contrast. This is the before. This is the after. It's hard to see, but it's in there. Maybe if I zoom in, you might be able to see it better. Here's the before. Here's the after. Nope, you really can't see it. But yeah, a little bit of contrast and it makes the photos real crispy. And that's how I get to my final my final image. Here goes my black and white. So my black and white sharpening and grain adds a lot of contrast. And it also adds a lot of grain because I like my black and whites to almost look film-esque, just like super grainy. Great shots, y'all. So yeah, what I've been doing recently for anyone who submits photos that I end up selecting as like my favorites, um, if I have your Instagram stuff, I will select your photos and show them off on the Natural Fields Instagram page, which if y'all haven't gotten there yet. Make sure to, make sure to give the page a follow. And yeah, if y'all have dope shots using the Natural Fills preset, just tag me and stuff. Tag the Natural Fills preset. And I've been showing off people's shots. But yeah, everyone's names are on here. Oh, that that was also Javier? My dude, he, he submitted the majority of the photos. <laughs> but yeah, if I can find y'all on Instagram, I'll hit you up and just ask for permission to show off your photo. And then obviously you get a tag in there. Get your natural feels preset. But yeah, overall beautiful shots. Amazing stuff overall. All right, y'all, but that's it for today. We we made it. We got through here. What, it was only three hours this time? Yeah. Only three hours? <laughs> what are we to do? Look, I gave myself all this headroom because my hair used to be so tall. Now I feel like I look short in the frame. Oh, I'm John Branch. <laughs> that one by Debbie is so tough. Which one was that? Which one was that? Was that the couch? Yeah. Oh, wait, was it? Or was it that one by the... Oh, yeah, the one by the window? Yeah. That goes hard. That's some, like, magazine editorial stuff. Appreciate all the advice, John. Thank you, y'all. Thanks. But yeah, um, what? We're about to go into the new month. I'm gonna live stream and watch the Fuji Summit. So if y'all wanna hang out with me for that, that's on the 31st, I think at 9 a.m. Eastern. Um, so for some of y'all, that's a nice nighttime time. 
for others of y'all, it's the middle of the night, so. Does natural feels work on Sony cameras? It does. The majority of the cameras I edited today were all Sony. Actually, um, I think this one was Sony. Yeah, this is Sony. Uh, this is Canon. This is Nikon. This is, these two are Sony. This one is Canon and then Fujifilm. So if you, if you wanted to, if you wanted to see like what cameras does it work on, this is most of the major ones. We have some Canon, some Nikon, Sony and Fuji with this mix of photos. And you see how they all look good and very similar. And that's the biggest point to the natural fields preset. Like it works on most all cameras. It's gonna give you the same tones, but just remember you still have to edit the photo. Like you still have to get the white balance looking right. You still have to do all of that. Um, but yeah, all cameras. But yeah, I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for hanging out. I had a fun time. I hope you all learned some stuff. And again, keep your eyes out for, I'm currently working on a Lightroom course that should be coming out soon. Basically, it's gonna walk you through Lightroom to learn it, to actually know it. And it's gonna be in a workflow for like events and stuff. Again, courses will be paid, but if y'all know me, with all the free information I give out, I'm, I'm really trying to teach y'all. Like, I'm not just out here trying to make money. So I hope it helps you all in your business, helps you learn some, helps you out with editing quickly and stuff. And you can share it with your friends and stuff when they're getting started. So keep an eye out for that. I'm hoping to get it out in maybe a month or two. But yeah, I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Share it with your friends. If y'all got photo friends, let them know. And I'll check y'all next time. All right. Peace.